some ideas about some things that you might want to think about. First of all, I think what will really help you, if you remember sometimes in lessons I've said about playing things all slurred or legato. So even if you're just reading through the notes, um, you don't need to worry about the rhythm if your focus is on the pitches, okay? So I'll give you an example. So if you forget what the rhythm is written and just try and play a, a continuing line of um, smooth legato notes that are the right notes, okay? And just one thing to bear in mind is um, the key signature is a B flat. There are quite a few B naturals that crop up, but it is in, in the key signature. So when it's not written as a natural, um, so like bar 12, for example, you've got a B flat, which I think in your recording, you played a B natural because you'd had B naturals a lot. But just play them all as a steady stream of notes as smoothly as you can. So hopefully you can see that I was just keeping it all slurred so there was no real tonguing apart from after a breath and that will help you to learn to play really smoothly as you cross from the lower register to the upper register and back again. Um, and just take your time, if you need to hesitate because you're not quite sure what note comes next just wait. So. While you're learning just the pitches it doesn't matter at all if you just wait but the best thing to do is to try and keep the air going whilst you're thinking because that means you're still playing whilst your brain is working out what the next note is so I think that's a really good approach and you can play all the way through that piece as, as far as you can and um, just try to read the notes correctly and of course do write things in in pencil if you keep misreading them F's something like A's or like C's E's and G's um, all these things are very easily mixed up when you're reading and you can get frustrated because you kind of go, oh, that's not the right note. But one of the best sort of things that you can try and do is to not go back and edit yourself or correct yourself as you're playing because that just means that you end up sort of, you know, losing the flow or not considering the flow. And I think if you can keep that going while you're learning, that's really useful. Um, so that's one thing you can do. And then the next thing, of course, is just to concentrate on the pulse and the rhythm. So this is where your metronome is going to be really helpful. So um, you weren't concentrating on the rhythm that time, so that's fine not to use a metronome. But then I think if you choose a really sensible speed, it says in mine, slightly strangely, dotted crotch equals 118, which is a bit of a weird um, speed. So I'm going to put my metronome on at 80, which is considerably slower than that. Still quite speedy, actually. And then what I might do is rather than play with my clarinet, I'm just going to clap the rhythm. Etc. Okay? So that helps you to think about this bouncy rhythm that we have when we've got 6-8 time. And there were definitely moments in your recording where you got that, you seem to be getting that rhythm and feeling the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, dun, good, dun, key, dun. It's very bouncy. So you've got the crotchet, quaver crotchet, dun, key, dun, key, dun, key, dun. So practicing that and getting used to what the rhythm actually is for you, um, tum, ta, tum, ta, tum, ta, tum, ta, tum is really useful to get that in your body, you know, to, to be feeling it and thinking it. Um, excuse me. And then um, try adding little bits of notes. Don't necessarily try and play the whole thing. So you might just try it yum dee dum da dee. <laughs> Just to get that flowing, and then add the quavers that run into it. Yeah, dun da dun da dun. And then once you've got that rhythm sorted in your head, the next phrase 
is the same rhythm. And the third rhythm is the same, but then it continues. With all of those quavers. And there's that B flat again. La di di da, B flat, A di 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 ba da di. So that's just some ideas about some things that you can, um, different approaches. Obviously, I know that you were saying that you were trying to get across the break as smoothly as possible. Now, I think that's the most important thing is making sure that you're concentrating on the air being continuous. Because when you were playing it, you were kind of playing each note and it was very kind of disjointed. Now, I understand that's because you're working out the notes, but that way of playing is really tiring because you're having to push the air out in little drips and drabs. I call that the toothpaste approach. So when you're squeezing the toothpaste and you get a blob and a blob and a blob. So if you can try and keep the air, play a long note and then start moving from that long note, maybe you're starting at D and then add the first two notes. And that way you learn to kind of read the notes whilst you're playing, okay? And you keep the air going. Because if you keep stopping and starting, it gets really tiring. Um, and that means that you kind of get more frustrated because not only have you got to try and work out what the notes are, you're also trying to get the air started again because you've stopped blowing. So that stops it from being from flowing. And that's perhaps not the most rewarding way of practicing. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, of course, what you can do is you can also have a listen to this. I don't know if you mentioned to your dad about this and whether he remembered it or not. Uh, maybe, unlike me, he wasn't sat in front of a television when he was um, you know, a toddler and he didn't watch this television programme, but I certainly did. Um, but I think if you were to Google it or something like that, there's probably a YouTube um, recording somewhere you could listen to just to kind of hear how it goes. Um, so I'll just play the first bit one more time for you. Hopefully that's um, going to be useful for you to um, work on between now and next week. Um, I'm